We have before us a man who shares our values and our principles, and he knows how to lead. Chief James Craig is a name you've come to know well. Many have come to know him as the man who kept the peace in Detroit as cities across the nation were burning. Yeah. Yeah. A man who was A man who is led, who leads by bringing people together, finding common good, yet standing strong to defend the importance of law enforcement and keeping our community safe. A man who grew up on the streets of Detroit, had a distinguished career in law enforcement across this great country, and came back to the city and the state that he loves. A man who defends our Second Amendment rights in earnest. He was featured on the front page of the NRA magazine. This guy knows how important our Second Amendment rights are. A man who is here today to join with us on this special day in this country's special history. A man with, a, I hope, a very bright, bright future in our party, our state, and our nation. And a man I, who I thank for choosing Jackson, Michigan, under the oaks for his first political speech. So it is my honor. It is my honor, my privilege, and my great pleasure to introduce to you, here under these historic oaks, a proven and courageous leader, former Detroit Chief of Police, James Craig. Is that right? of the founding of the Republican Party. Woo! Chairman Matt Day, Michigan Republican Party, Chairman Ron Weiser, Chairman Mishan Maddock, co-chairman, City Majority Leader Shirky, Bishop Ira Combs, and everyone that's here today from all over the great state of Michigan. Yeah! yeah. 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 This sacrifice and dedication to the Republican Party and public service are extraordinary and appreciated by all of us. And why, you may ask, is the former chief of police to the city of Detroit speaking before you here today? I tell you why. My name is James Gray, and I'm here to celebrate today with you under the oaks where the Republican Party was founded. The truth is, I've been a Republican for many years. Now, but I am proud to stand here on this hallowed ground where our party changed the course of history yeah. for the better and declare my proud membership in our great party. Yeah, yeah. And while my role as chief of police rendered my partisan affiliation loop, the truth is that I've long had conservative values. I was raised in the church. Amen. I was taught to respect my elders. Yeah. Yeah. I saw firsthand the importance of hard work, self-reliance, and a can-do attitude. Yeah. All right, all right. Just like most African Americans growing up in Detroit, I was automatically considered a Democrat. Right. right. You were born a Democrat. Right. But over time, as you've had your own life experiences, and the opportunity to form your own worldview, come you come to your own conclusions. Yeah. Yeah. I will give you a few of the experiences that bring me to this point today. 
After being laid off from the Detroit Police Department in 1980, I moved to Los Angeles to join the LAPD. Clearly a city and state that was Democrat. So I was in the same political space when I left Detroit. What struck me early in my police career is that many African Americans in our most vulnerable communities were in a tragic cycle of poverty yeah. that was generation. Yeah. And while I couldn't fully understand the reasons, I realized that the policies in many of our cities failed. Yeah. I came to realize that the Republican Party's initial fight to end physical bondage was today replaced by economic bondage, which we see in our vulnerable communities of color. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. We know that handouts increase dependency on government yeah. Yeah. and only for the purpose of political gain. Yeah. Right. At the time of the Rodney King incident and the subsequent unrest in Los Angeles, I was the president of the Oscar Joe O'Brien Foundation, an African American Police Association. Following the days of this crisis, a prominent local minister, a United States representative, you know her, Maxine Waters, Maxine. met with our board. And during our meeting, she displayed disrespect and made vile remarks directed toward the group, questioning how we could work for the LAPD as African Americans. I quickly ended this meeting that was designed to explore solutions and improving relationships in the African American community. It dawned on me, then, how could this elected leader, a Democrat, who we believe represented us, stoop to such a low level? Recognizing that she did not speak for all Democrats, I again reflected on my party affiliation. My transition in becoming a Republican became more reality after my appointment as chief of police in the city of Portland, Maine. In Portland, the chief had the responsibility to approve concealed pistol licenses. I began to reflect on this issue of law-abiding citizens that carry and the effect this can have on reducing crime. Amen. As a practitioner at that time of Three decades, it just made sense. And just so you know, I carry here today, and I will carry. Cleaning up, I found myself on the cover of the NRA magazine, and even in opposition with Barack Obama in the media over the issue of gun rights and the impact on crime. I was still in a non-political job in the subsequent years, and I was committed to personally remaining non-political in my public role in keeping the community safe as police chief. Privately, I found that my life experiences were leading me to vote Republican, including for President Trump in both elections. <laughs> some of the experiences that shaped me. I also studied history. People like Abraham Lincoln, Booker T. Washington, Sojourner Truth, and Frederick Douglass. Because of my experience in Detroit and keeping the peace and keeping the community safe while others burned across the country, and because we are right here at the birthplace of the Republican Party, I want to start with a quote from Abraham Lincoln. A house divided against itself cannot stand. So here's a little history. It's interesting because Lincoln said at the Illinois Republican State Convention in 1858, less than four years after the founding here in Jackson, those are historical words, special words, meaningful words that should speak to any goodwill American. But it should also touch our hearts right here in the great state of Michigan. The riots of 1967 and 1968 changed our state. We were on the verge of it happening again in 2020. Riots began in cities across America with Democrat leadership were allowing their cities to riot. Yes. 
yeah. to burn, yeah. and yes, to fail. Yeah. I could not imagine allowing that to occur in the city I grew up in, the city I love, the city of Detroit. Come on, that's right. Come on, Scott, give me a talked about. And so I did what any good strong leader should do. Work to solve the problem. That's right. And utilizing what I learned as a leader in cities across this country. From Portland to Cincinnati to Los Angeles and then the Rodney King nightmare we stepped up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We brought people together. Yes. First you find common ground. Then you reach consensus. And then you solve the problem. This kept Detroit calm, kept Detroit safe, protected the rebirth of this great city, and the communities across Southeast Michigan could rest well knowing that we're all working together. Yes, sir. And I say it one more time, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. I love Abraham Lincoln. He is truly one of our greatest presidents and the founder of our party, but also looked into African-American history and found the likes of Frederick Douglass, yes, yes, Booker T. Yes, Washington, yes, yes. and Sojourner Truth. Come on, yes. Here are a few from Frederick Douglass. Once you learn to read, you will be forever free. Yes, yes. Yes. Come on, now. Yes. 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 That spoke to me and my heart about the need to break down societal barriers to choice and education yeah. and support the rights of parents to find adequate solutions to educate their children. Yeah. The smartest person I ever knew was my late mother, and that is because she was a voracious reader of books. She put herself through Wayne State University, obtaining an undergraduate and advanced degrees in record time. And to this day, she's one of the people who I respect most in life. Amen. Here's another one. It's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Oh, yeah. That spoke to me about the importance of a strong mother and father and supporting policies that help families. Yeah. And finally, people may not get all they work for in this world, but they must certainly work for all they get. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke to me about the importance of having a job, getting that boost of confidence that comes from earning your way through life with hard work. I refer to this as self-reliance. And then there's a the story of Sojourner Truth, famous, strong, brave, historical woman Buried down the highway in Battle yeah, Creek. Yes, yes, yes. The truth is powerful. And here today we are among friends for this great celebration. But we need to take our message into Democrat communities. Yeah. Right. The truth that success through self-reliance is the answer. Yes, sir. The truth that a hand up is better than a hand out. Yeah. 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 The truth is not our state to lift up all those who seek to work for a better future. I offer to help lead our Republican, Republican Party into areas that haven't historically voted Republican yeah. and to show that we are all among friends and there are no enemies yeah. when it comes to Michigan's future. Yeah. 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 And then that leads us to Booker T. Washington. Yeah. Character, not circumstances, makes the man. Yep, yep. Oh, let me say it one more time. Oh, one more time. And I'm going to say it slowly. Character, not circumstances, makes the man.
in Detroit, yes. in Flint, yes. in Grand Rapids, yes. Traverse City, and in Marquette. Yes. People in the toughest of circumstances need to hear those words. And people in the luckiest of circumstances need to hear them as well. Those who are successful, those who are downtrodden, black and white, rich and poor, Republican and Democrat, character, not circumstances, makes the man. Amen. And so my life experiences lead me to be a Republican. My studying of history and great historical figures like Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Booker T. Washington led me to be a Republican. But I still need to address the issues of today. I tell you why I'm a Republican. I believe in self-reliance because teaching the fish is better than giving free fish. That's right. I believe in a hand up rather than a hand out. I am for life. across the world. I am pro-freedom. I will always protect the rights of others to live their lives, yeah. speak their minds, practice their faith, yeah. enjoy liberty, and pursue happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Dad. These are the principles that align with today's Republican Party. Yeah. These are the positions that are untenable in much of today's Democrat Party. But what I can't respect is a victimhood mentality. And that's the mentality being pushed by the leaders of today's Democrat Party. Yeah. And you heard me say this, by one of these so-called elected individuals, but it's offensive, it's dangerous, and it threatens the very future of this country. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Let's be real. Today's Democratic Party isn't the party it used to be. No. No. The leaders kowtow to Rashida Tlaib and Maxine Waters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rashida Tlaib is not our state's future. No. 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 Maxine Waters is not our country's future. Today's Democratic Party wants to defund our police, open up our borders to criminals, and silence dissenting voices. Yeah. 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 I will never back down to liberal wokeism. Always stand up for what's right, despite the intimidation and resistance from the radical left, woke corporations, visit cable news pundits, or out of touch Hollywood celebrities. Yeah. 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 Their agenda isn't about working together or seeking to find common ground. As chief of police, that is what we did. When we took steps to stop crime and improve relations in the community, we have to get kids off the street and into classrooms. We must foster an environment that allows jobs to flourish. And yes, even when we have differences of opinion, even with those who disagree with the notion of self-reliance, we must find ways to communicate and work together. Listening and returning the phone calls of legislators, Republicans and Democrats, 
then they seek to speak to the governor would be a good start. Amen. Yeah. 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 There will be plenty of time to address issues and leadership in the near future. Today in Jackson, our focus is on the founding of our party. Yeah. The anniversary of the founding of the Republican Party is an important reminder that we are the party of Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. We are a party that offers a better path forward, that emphasizes success through self-reliance. My experience of growing up on the streets of Detroit, policing in major cities across the country, and bringing people together to solve problems led me to become a Republican. Okay. <laughs> you know, by the way, somebody out in the audience already wearing a t-shirt that has James Craig on it. I salute you, my friend. <laughs> Some may argue that the differences between our two parties are there, perhaps as stark as they were in 1854 at this birthplace. The work ahead is very challenging. If the people of Michigan are to take back their own destiny, take control of their lives, and limit the interference of government, then we will have to unite and work hard. Government Democrats living in Lansing aren't going to voluntarily give up the power and the control they've accumulated over the past couple of years. Please listen to me, Governor Whitmer. America isn't a monarchy. We aren't ruled by kings and queens. We ended that back in 1776. Michigan is going to have a future of freedom, a future that lifts up all boats, a future of hardworking people who have good paying jobs and greater opportunity, who want to go to work, who want to keep their small businesses open and run them, or I'll say it again, keep those small businesses open. And run them without the heavy hand of government in the way or in their pocket. Yeah. And like we told the kings and queens back in 1776, we're going to decide our future as a free people. That's right. Not ruled by a royal decree, but instead by decisions made at the ballot box. Our country now resolves disagreements through elections. The Republican Party was formed right here on this spot where we stand today for the right reason, and it's, a good, it's an example how good ideas prevail in a free society, while bad ideas end up on the dust pile of history, often alongside their authors. We must ensure this nation and our great state of Michigan remains free from tyranny and oppression in order to protect the very things that make us great. Make no mistake, at the ballot box in November, in the year of 2022, we will be celebrating our independence Come from on. the rule of Governor Whitmer. <laughs> Just as we celebrated our barbecue and fireworks on the 4th of July. <laughs> And the birth of our party right here today. Yeah. God bless you. God bless our troops. God bless our police officers. God bless Michigan. And God bless America. Thank you. How proud we are to have Chief Jane Craig as part of our Republican Party. Yeah. Sharing our conservative values that we hope so good.